Hi guys, welcome to this solo high score run of the Strange Terrain Nightfall. I'm using Titan Striker, Bottom Tree of the Subclass, Bygones, Yulton, 21% Delirium. I've got Machine Gun Reserves on my Mark and my Helmet and Heavy Ammo Finder on my Gauntlets. We're running with a 3.3 score multiplier, which is achieved with a 200 power handicap, Momentum, Match Game, Heavyweight and Oxinge. So if you're new to the channel, welcome it's nice to have you here uh this is the i've used i've used 21 percent delirium before i can i can vouch for how good it is i know how good it is but i've never used the yotan and when i say i've never used the yotan i've had it for about two months maybe more than that and i never started using it to the, maybe the middle of last week just prepping it for future content because i'd never fired it i had that thing in my head about how kind of disgusting it used to be in crucible i don't do a lot of crucible so i didn't know it wasn't as as rife in crucible as it used to be so when i went into you know when i went into crucible i didn't see that many of them i was speaking to friends and they were saying it's, it's it's not so much of a thing now so i decided to use it man i've been missing out it's such a fun weapon to use and it's got so many uh it really does have a lot of uses it will be featured in future content. Uh, so, get to this part. You can see, we. you don't have to kill those ads right at the start, but I did because this literally was a lazy run. I, I, I started off just being, you know, I was just going to get the 50k, just come in and get 50k for the Lumina. That's why I'm only running with a 3.3. And actually, I ended up melting this Nightfall. This is probably the easiest I've ever had a, had a Nightfall a high score. Because of the weapons, the weapon setups made it very easy. So, from here, what we're going to do is we're just going to clear up these few ads here with the Yotun. Uh, got to be careful for stuff like that, especially the snipers. That yellow bar, that orange bar, that elite kind of just poke my sight away from this guy. Who keeps ducking behind that rock. We'll get him on the left hand side though. He's not escaping. And I can see I'm getting fired upon, so I'm just moving, putting that... Putting this pillar in front of me in this night, and then the delirium does it does does its does its job, and then we're going to need just just to slow them up a little bit, do a better better air of effect damage, and then the Yotun's just going to go to work. Such a good weapon. We'll clear out these knights, and then we'll make we'll, we'll throw the orb, break the crystal, and then make our way make our way up to the the last set of ads. And that's this section done. I've I've noticed, and you probably will. I'll point it out as well. Long-time viewers of the channel know that I always scream on about heavy ammo. Heavy ammo isn't such a problem now. It can drop from heavy ammo kills, but during this run, the old kind of thing that I, the old analogy I used to work with, the strategy, the whatever you want to call it, was obviously it would drop from different weapons. But I I. I kind of noticed that it dropped from the you know there was a certain weapon or ability that would stood a higher chance of dropping heavy ammo and definitely in this run it was the Yotun. now i'm going to add something here about that kill if you're looking for heavy ammo that 99 percent of the time whatever enemy whether it's an exploder or just a thrall that comes out of here will drop heavy i can't remember ever killing that enemy not getting heavy so i don't know if that's a thing well, it must be because I've noticed it. So we're going to take these two shielded knights out from round here with with the the delirium, and then we'll move down, take out the next couple of ads, and then we're going to get on the rock. We'll take these three ads out here, and then we're going to get on this rock and just melt these next couple of ads. And that's the section done. Now we're into kind of all these areas are kind of. You know, decent cover, decent place to attack from, and you shouldn't have too much of a problem. Now, this is like the, I think this is the, this is the first solar enemy that we'll encounter. And which is why I decided that this would be good for the Yotun, because you can't escape these solar. And it really is, on, it's arc and solar on this. So, we're going to put a few Yotun onto this wizard, just to make the Delirium's job just a little bit easier. 
as you can see no no hassles no issues at all taking those ads out these nights are moving a little bit quickly so rather than wasting yotin that might not do the job we wanted it done quickly 21 percent does it now 21 the delirium is a very very good weapon and when you proc kill and tally times three which basically is just kill three enemies with it. It stays propped until you store it or you reload. If you run over special ammo, you'll overfill the magazine. If you have those rounds available, that is, and you can fill it up to 200 rounds. You guys, I'm sure you guys know this, but I'm just covering the bases for people that might not know it. It does more damage than the Thunderlord when you do that. In fact, I think it might be the highest damage machine gun once you've got Kill and Tally on. So... 400 and odd rounds it can hold for with, with with what i've got it's like four three five you can single fire it like a scout if you want it does a lot of damage when you do that especially in these high score scenarios and more so against arc shielded enemies i've got a boss spec on it so just to make up for that 20 percent damage fall off that machine guns had you know that nerf they got during arc week was it arc week or was it just before arc or just before arc week it got it so we're just we're just gonna just pick these enemies off, you know. There's an arc shielded knight up here, and there's one more guy. We'll just kill him normally, just to save the, the five or six rounds because we are low now on, on heavy. So we're gonna try and generate some heavy using what I consider to be the weapon that was dropping heavy, which was the Yotun. I tried all. I tried my grenade. I tried primary. Was getting nothing, so we'll go with the Jotun. So we know we're going to get a wanted, wanted uh, wizard here. So we're not going to bother with the delirium. We're just going to use the Jotun to take her out. The Jotun actually, t as you can see here, it does tons of damage. So we're going to. This is where the real strategy comes in. This for me can be the most frustrating part of any nightfall because you can die without even expecting to be dying here. What I try and do is I try and use the edges of, of that this kind of center kind of let's let's just call it an, the center island where the where the ogre is. I use the the high edges as cover so I can you know I can maneuver around to, you know take out ads take out anything I need with having cover from the ogre. As you can see, the ogre can't see me if I stay tight to the edge. The ogre can't see me. Now normally what I would do as I would do exactly what I've done here, and I'll go around this edge. Uh, anywhere I can, I'll stay tight. As you can see, I'm trying to look for the, the ogre's shadow, because the ogre follows you around. Back when I first started doing this, it was kind of what you would do, is you would lead the ogre to one side, and then quickly make it over the other side, because it, it, the ogre's not so mobile. And what I used to do was, I would always attack the ogre from the same place. So, I knew that the knights had been up a little while, so I knew I'd have got a third knight. That's why I just killed that ogre and came straight back here. So, we'll pick this orb up, take out the crystal. We've got one more crystal to take out, but we're just trying, what we're trying to do, as you can see, we don't have a lot of heavy. So, we're just making our way around, just killing ads, trying to generate a little bit of heavy. We've got plenty of time. We're only at eight minutes. We're seventy-five thousand. We know we're going to get a decent amount of score from the ogre, so I'm I'm looking for easy ads to pick off with the Jotun. You know, we know we've got two snipers up top, and we know now because we can feel that we're just getting some health back. We know the knight's there, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the knight because. He is, whenever he sees us, he's going to do this. He's going to chase us. Kill and tally times three. You know, it just melts the, melts the night. This is where I normally take the ogre from, but surprise, surprise, the ogre was here. So now we're going to make it round and we're going to try and generate some heavy. And like I say, we know that the sniper's up top. So we're going to take those snipers. We know that we know they're elites. So we'll get into cover around this rock and Yotun, and then we get some heavy. Pick up this. We know that there's ads here. We know we can be focus fire here, and we know that the, the ogre will be here now. So we're just going to stay up here, and just Yotun some of these ads, 
and as you'll see, I'm going to start dropping heavy like it's going out, of, going out of fashion. We know the ogre's there, but we're being attacked from the other side, so we just drop down and double back on myself. Move as quickly as possible, keep, make myself as hard a target to hit as possible, and just yielding some of these ads. As you can see, I'm, I'm just dropping heavy after heavy. I'm not saying that the yielding will always drop tons and tons of heavy. What I am saying is that, that for me, there always seems to be a weapon that's more likely, or an ability that's more likely, another piece of heavy, where it full complements that four, five, eight rounds. There always seems to be a, a weapon or an ability that at that moment is the one that's going to drop you heavy. So now we're going to go after the ogre. We could see, he's, we were just trying to kind of peek him because we could see his uh, silhouette on the back wall. There he's down. Take out this ad here. And now I just want to make sure I can, you know, I want to see if I can, if I can get any special. There's some special. We're just going to have a, just a check around just to see if there's any more special, any more heavy. There isn't, but I know that now, obviously. <laughs> I'm not... You know, so there isn't any, but we're good. We, we've got a fair amount of ammunition for the boss. Now, for the boss, let's break it down real quick. There's three stages of the boss. There's a static stage. Then there's a static stage where the boss shoots. And then there's the mobile stage where the boss moves about and shoots. Static, static stage, static phase. We, we're going to be in the same place as we are for the second phase, which is the static but firing phase, where Norcris fires on you. For the mo mobile stage, we're going to keep our super for the mobile stage because we can manage the areas. We can manage the, the ads from, from our cover during phase one and two. Keep our super because one of the reasons I went bottom tree of the subclass was, was because of how much... Uh, I mean, it, it lasts longer, but you also get a ton of resilience. And you need it. Because it, regardless of what you do, there could be, there won't always be, but there could be times where you're caught out here by ads encroaching around the back or, you know. So anyway, this is where we start. Now, what you've got to do when you're here, we're just trying to, Clear some ads, but we know we're going to get ads coming from the left. So you just have to keep your head on a swivel. You can back away here. This is where we're going to be for the first phase. And as you can see, we can keep, we can stay here for, for phase two as well. Because knockers can't shoot us. And you're going to get these acolytes. They come on both sides, but we're only really going to be bothering at the moment about the, the ones on our side. We're not going to try and take all the other ones out. As you can see, we know we're going to get our knight now. And I took out all the acolytes before I took the knight to get kill and tally times three. Which meant the knight never stood a chance. So we know there's another knight up, but we also know there's another, what, three or four acolytes up. We're just trying to generate some more heavy. Just to be on the safe side, we're not exactly... You never are. I mean, it's, it's a very good weapon, the 21% delirium, but it's there's also that fast rate of fire. You, you, there, there are going to be times where you're going to be struggling for ammo. That's why, the you know, it's so perfect to be coupled with... with uh, it's so perfect to be coupled with the Jotun because the Jotun makes up for it. That's it's just great damage. So we'll reload... We've got the orb, get into position, break the break the crystal, take out take out the delirium. Need for area of effect damage. And as you can see, this time I've moved slightly to the right so that the rock can offer us a little bit of protection from not just him, but the snipers that that, that have appeared. You'll always get a, you'll always get two snipers that'll appear. Now we're gonna get the wizards. So what we're gonna do is Yotun the first wizard. And now we're going to clear all the ads before we go after the second wizard. Now, one, as long as the wizards are up, the knights won't spawn. So, you you know, you can control this area and control the ads simply by not killing one of the one of the wizards. Now you know that all you got to kill is these uh, thrall. 
as you can see I'm, I'm still trying to generate some some heavy we'll get these to gather up and one fire takes them all out well I say all of them there was only two that's a lot sometimes <laughs> that's a lot of throw <laughs> so now we're gonna go we're gonna position myself now in retrospect I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest doing this because we're in a bad place now we've got heavy we're good we know that there's another sniper and this is where I got caught out it was okay because I recognised straight away what danger I was in. I was caught in the centre of the map with two knights shooting at me because of that. Because I tried to take the sniper. So you just have to be... It's all nightfalls, raids, you know, special missions like the Whisper and the Zero Hour and Shattered Throne. It's, it's not just about the weapons. It's not just about, you know, uh, what armour and all the rest of it you've got on. It's positioning... Knowing what where's the best place to attack, the the ads from, you know, there's there's a lot that goes, there's a lot of thought, there's a there's a lot of thought process that goes into making these things look easy, because we both we all know they're not easy. So now we we're trying a different place. We just want to make him immune as fast as possible. I was pretty lucky there because I wasn't sure if he was immune or not. And we just managed to put them immune. We're just going to take these snipers out now. Now this is phase three. This is the mobile phase. This rock I'm at now. And the rock we used for phase one and two. They are going to be our safe zones. Right? And what we're going to do when Nocris comes to one. We're going to make our way to the next one. And we are going to try and lead Nocris to what side. If we want to go across the top. As you can see I tried to lead Nocris round to this side. So that he's as far away from me as possible. But this is where, why you kept your super. Because of the amount of... Uh, the amount of resilience and, and shield that you get. As you can see, I mean, I'm, be I'm pre being hit. But it doesn't really look like I'm taking a lot of damage. You know, it's very, very good for this kind of activity. Especially, especially because we've got momentum on as well. So once I killed that knight, all the ads had converged on me. I knew I had a ton of heavy. So I, I just grabbed the orb, which took me out my super. They're all chasing me. Shame for them because they're all gonna die. But don't don't get involved. You know, don't don't get too involved in firefights. I'm gonna go over here. I don't know why I'm wanting more heavy, but it's just to overfill to get that 200 rounds. Just make sure that we're completely clear of ads before we we finish off this night. And then just run over, pick the orb up. We're good. Throw the orb. We've got 155, which shouldn't even take us that to put them down. And it is a him, son of Oryx. There we go. One hundred and twenty-four thousand. I think it keeps going down. I think I, I can't remember, but not bad for for a three point three modifier. These weapons make this very easy. This should help you with this step with the Lumina if you're still stuck at this part. If not, I hope you guys enjoy the run. I hope it helps if you're wanting to get the Britek Osprey or just get your high score and get your double rewards. Thank you very much for watching. I always appreciate your viewership, and I will see you in the next video.